Hi everyone, I'm Terry, and this is the Yarn Joy Podcast, episode number 134. Welcome. Okay, so for my finished objects this week, I have... Uh, this Now, this is something I started before Christmas. It was going to be a Christmas present, and I just ran out of time, <laughs> and I didn't get it finished uh, to give as a gift before Christmas. Uh, so, um, But I did want to finish, uh, finish her, so I went ahead and finished her. And so now this will be either a upcoming birthday gift for someone, or I'll just save it for next Christmas. And So we'll see. But anyway... Uh, this is from the, well, I call this the tutu bear because her little dress kind of reminds me of a tutu. <laughs> but I think she turned out really cute. Uh, I wouldn't, I'm kind of wondering about the eyes, if you can see. Um, the, the pattern, okay, this is where I got the pattern. This is a very old pattern. I've had it a long time. Uh, this is from a book, crochet book, called Crochet Patterns by Hirschners. And the year is, night, let's see, let me find a date. July, August edition, 1991. <laughs> so, uh, it, I've had this book for a long time. And uh, there's a, I've, I've talked about this book before. There's a really nice article about this lady right here. Her name is... Um, let me find it. <laughs> Her name is Lori Jean Carluck, K A R L U K. And I tried to look her up to see, you know, like, what are you doing these days? <laughs> and I found her on Facebook and I found her, I think I found her on Ravelry where she had a few of these bears, which is her design. Um, published in different things over the years but that's it I haven't seen anything recent from her but anyway it's a great article in this book about how she had made these bears there's more of them right there um, and she donated them to lo the local uh, school like the elementary school they had like this little store type thing in the school where the kids would earn points for good behavior and good grades and different things and they could spend their points in that little store uh, for gifts and can well, not gifts but toys and candy and different things and so she made these bears and donated them to that school and, and the article is really neat talked about how a lot of the kids that was like the first thing they reached for is one of the bears so I think that's awesome and so I've made this book a made book no <laughs> I made this bear <laughs> before uh, I made one it was the boy little boy bear like this one I think it's called Bobby Bear or something I made that one um, for a baby gift one time years ago and I also made another one that was I tried to kind of did I kind of changed the colors to try to make it kind of Winnie the Pooh type colors <laughs> um, and then I know I've made the girl with the dress before but I can't remember when I made it but anyway uh, I now I changed the pattern a little bit because she had called for using a I think the pattern called for like using a J hook or an I hook maybe an I hook very big and my problem was that when I would use that it would cause holes uh, where you could see the stuffing through in mine and so uh, I wanted to try to rework the pattern a little bit and use um, I used worst of weight yarn just like she did but I went down to like a site I think it was an I have to I wrote it down in my book but <laughs> it's in the other room <laughs> um, I, I think I used an E hook or an F hook one of those and so the only thing about it is the fact that when I use such a small hook she, she was turning it really small and so I adjusted some of the stitch counts on some of the body parts like I did an extra um, increase on everything really to make it a little bit bigger round um, so I think she turned out pretty good proportionally <laughs> uh, except that I think her arms are a little fat uh, I probably should have just left it and not did the extra increase on the arms, but I think I think she turned out pretty cute. So, finish object number one. Long explanation. Sorry. <laughs> um, 
Oh, and I was gonna say about the eyes. One more thing. <laughs> she had used, uh, looked like she used knots or French knots or something for the eyes, and I was trying to do that, but then I decided to go around the eye, as you see, uh, with some white yarn just to try to liven up the eye a little bit so it didn't look, look um, I don't wanna say dead, <laughs> but um, flat, I don't know. And so that's why I put some stitches of white around that knot that I made to try to help it out. I think it kind of livened it up a little bit. <laughs> so anyway, um, I need to do some sort of a go-to um, method of doing eyes that are stitched on instead of um, safety eyes. Of course, safety eyes always looks the cutest, but uh, if it's going to be for a baby or something, I'd rather have stitched on eyes of some sort. <laughs> okay. Uh, on to the next thing. Okay, um, finished object number two is the, um, this was a challenge. Okay, so Crystal of Chronically Crocheting here on YouTube is starting this challenge called the Stash Buster 2020, uh, where each month she's going to uh, not, well, it either be her or one of the hosts that will assign a, a certain t project type. Um, not a particular pattern. You can pick your, pick your own pattern, but it's to use your stash. You know, different small pa small projects that might be used. will use like one skein or you know something like that to try to use up your stash. And so, she, um, and then like at the end of the month, whoever participates and posts pictures on her Facebook page, they will have a little drawing at the end of the month uh, or after that month or whatever for a little prize you know just for fun um so anyway the this month's assignment was a cowl and so i did this one in fact um well I, it's not my first cowl but i haven't made many so uh i really like this the way the yarn came out i think i showed it last week but i did finish it last week it was a works in progress uh but i used simply soft karen simply soft prints yeah and um I think, I don't know, I already put my, what was left back over there. But anyway, um, it was some type of ocean type print. No, no, peacock feather? Yeah, peacock feather. <laughs> anyway, I finished it. And it. I'm not going to try it on because it'll mess up my hair. And I had a bad hair day as it is, so I don't want to mess it. I don't want to... <laughs> mess up a good thing <laughs> but anyway it would be like this you know and it stretches pretty good so then you can you can um uh you know it doesn't like choke you up here it's not like a turtleneck um it's you know it's a pretty pretty good opening there anyway i, li I really like the way it turned out and i and i've got a black coat and I think this is not black but anyway dark <laughs> um I think it would look really nice really cute so um I had fun doing this I used a one whole skein and a little bit of the next one so if I would have used a no let's see if I would have made it maybe not as tall which I could have done that uh, I probably could have gotten away with just using one skein um but I had an, another skein of it, so I went ahead and did, did it that way. But anyway, finish object number two. Okay, finish object number three. Okay, this is another use up my stash type thing. I had this big, like a gallon, well, I had them all in a gallon size Ziploc, but I had picked up this chunky yarn. I've had it for a long time. It was one of those... Um, mill in bags you know that you can get at joann's for like 7.99 and i think it's a pound of yarn or something and it had this big chunky um multicolored type blue uh it's kind of a striping type thing yeah um chunky yarn and i'm not one to use chunky yarn very much so i've had it for a long time and uh, i just wanted to try to find something that i could use to use it up and uh you know to bust some stash <laughs> so anyway i had about like i said four i think of these skeins and so i found a hat pattern it's called the uh, basic beanie but it used chunky yarn and it's from maria's blue crayon and uh so i started making it it was re it's real simple 
and I used a size K hook which is 6.5 millimeter and so it did come out with some patterning patterning as you can see uh, here's one of them and then uh, so that's one and then here's number two right there okay and then here's number three complete right there and I'm still using yarn like I said I've got one more of these big messy skeins here um, and so um, I I'm still working on them in fact I will show you one just a minute under my works in progress but anyway uh, I, I did the pattern just the way it's written except that I kept trying it on my head and uh, I ended up having to do one more row of the ribbing at the bottom there um, to get it where it would cover my ears or all, just about the bottom of my ear uh, if I didn't if I did it as written the way mine turned out it was just covering maybe half of my ear and so I decided to um, go one time one more time around to get it to where the length was covering my ear so um, anyway I think they turned out really cute and now I will probably uh, donate them I know uh, Sylvia and Dana over of on Tabitha's Treasures they take donations I believe the hats and scarves they take and distribute through uh, a church over on their side of town yeah they're in my city but they live on the other side of town as I do or the city and so um, but she in the name of Tabitha's Treasures they donate to different places like a nursing home and then hats and scarves they uh, distribute from through uh, church so anyway, I'm going to probably donate them to Sylvia. I enjoyed working on them. I'm not a fan of chunky yarn because it just seems like it's harder on my hands to, to do it. But uh, I like the way they turned out. They seem like they're going to be nice and, <laughs> I'm going like this, <laughs> nice and squishy, you know, and warm. So, uh, okay, um, finish object number what is this four yeah four <laughs> um is my first preemie hat of the year this goes along with my 2020 goal of doing at least 30 preemie hats to donate to the NICU in October uh, for their Halloween hat drive and so I'm trying to do at least three per month hopefully I can get an, uh, some extra ones here and there in there so but at least three so here is preemie hat number one for 2020 the year 2020 <laughs> for January this is a little uh, preemie uh, tiger hat I got this pattern from uh, cream of the crop crochet.com and I have made this before in fact I do have a tutorial on how to make this uh, in the description box below uh, now she did this is a preemie size but then she, I believe she has patterns to go up that includes a newborn size as well I mean how you change the stitches uh, but I will link pat the description in the description box below uh, where you can get the pattern and also my tutorial okay <laughs> okay um, so that is all my finished objects okay so now on to works in progress works in progress I'm I'm still working on those chunky hats just like I was saying and so I showed you that I had done three completed so here is going to be um, number four okay and I'm got I have to start I mean I ran out of yarn so I've now start this uh, skein so this will be number four I'm thinking that I'm thinking I will finish this one and possibly do another one and you know um, I don't know if I'll get six out of all this that I've got um, total because I've got three done already this is number four but um, I, I know I'm pretty sure I'll get this one plus another one so and then I'll use up this yarn <laughs> that I've had forever so I'm happy about that and I'm happy that somebody can use these hats okay so that's works in progress number one is still working on these and I like I said I'm using a K hook for those okay works in progress number two is my next preemie hat and I just barely got it started so this will be preemie hat number two for January because I want to do three per month and this is going to be a um, newborn owl hat 
that's what the name of the pattern is and uh, I will pop in a picture here of what it's going to look like okay so all I've got so far on that hat is the little round white which will be their the eyes the circles for the eyes um so like I said, I just barely got it done. Now it is a newborn size and I've been aiming to make preemie sizes for these. So all I did is I believe the the pattern called for, I'm looking down at my notes, <laughs> the pattern called for an H hook, I think, and I'm using an F. Yeah, I'm going down two hook sizes. Um, so um, that's works in progress. <laughs> barely. <laughs> Barely got it started. Okay, and then works in progress number two is another scrap project. Now, I if you remember back there that scrap blanket with the squares. Okay, uh, I was using num that was the unraveled mitten uh, crochet along for last year, and uh, I was using number three weight yarns, which was some baby yarns and some leftover uh, Lion Brand Mandala yarns which is the number three uh, to make that and so I have left over more <laughs> of the um, I'll show you mandala bits and pieces I have this this is wood nymph now I think that's pr pretty much a whole skein there but then see I have this one that was also wood nymph that I just have a piece of and uh, and then I have a few more baby uh, balls of baby yarn um, that I just have little bits of. This is, of course, another uh, mandala. But I have it in this bag here that Amanda, which is Lisa of Happy to Hook, her daughter, Amanda, um, she made, we did a craft swap and she made me this tote bag. And so I have, that's what I've got my scrap baby yarns. Like I have this one, which is a uh, gradient type. Anyway, so since I still have some that I need to get to work work at to, to bust my stash, uh, I thought I would start with the uh, I'm making the Chevron Lace Infinity Scarf, and this is a pattern that is by MoogliBlog.com, I think. I'll link it below. And now I made this Infinity Scarf before, but I used the line the. Um, I think it's Lion Brand, the ice cream yarn, you know, in the grape. I made it not this Christmas, but the Christmas before. And I, I enjoyed making the pattern, and so I thought, well, I'm going to do that, but I'm going to use the scrap yarn because it uses number three weight yarn. And so this is what I did. I started out with white, which is a baby weight yarn, and then after that, um, I'm doing four rows of the scrap yarns that I have kind of picking yarns that are sort of similar in uh, hue right shade I don't know uh, but anyway so I'm but I'm doing it instead of letting them change on their own except for this one this one was like a variegated type print uh, jacquard print I think Bernat that was a baby weight yarn Besides that, I am keeping it to solid, you know, colors that don't change, it, unless it was a variegated yarn. But anyway, uh, four rows of each before I change it to another section. So that's what I've done so far, uh, but I think it's going to be cool. I am enjoying working on it. <laughs> okay, so uh, this is a uh, works in progress number two, three. Okay, works in progress number four is the paper blanket, which is the notebook paper. It looks like a notebook paper. I mean, it looks like a sheet of notebook paper <laughs> that I'm making for my daughter-in-law, who is a teacher. And it is a pattern by a craftyconcept.com. And uh, I know it looks the same, except that it's getting longer. <laughs> um, I did widen it uh put more stitches in it widthwise than the pattern called for because I wanted to make it bigger. Uh, but anyway, here it is. And my, um, it's getting so big you can't see all of it. But I did another white section and then another uh, blue stripe. And I weaved in my loose ends that were on the edges, <laughs> except for that one because that's where I'm going to join my white because I'm starting, starting over with the white again to do another section here. 
Okay, I haven't measured it, or I did, but I probably forgot. <laughs> but I need to, as a piece of notebook paper, I, it needs to be taller this way than this way, <laughs> than wide. So I've still got a ways to go, but I've really been trying to at least get a section. I really need to get more than just one section per week because it's taking me a long time to do it. <laughs> But anyway, I'll pop in a picture here of what this looks like, and you can see that it look it will look like a piece of paper. <laughs> okay, so works in pro that's another works in progress because I'm I'm still working on it. <laughs> uh, and then works in progress number five. Okay, this one I I will show you. I will pop in a picture uh, after I talk about it a little bit, and then I'll I'll show you what it is because it is a graph GAN that I am doing and it's very difficult with all the bobbins I've got connected to it for me to hold it up right now. Um, so what I'm doing is the loom along, the mystery loom along that Llama Mama Kayla is having where she uh, each week, sometimes it's more than a week until she puts in the next row, but she's been releasing it row by row, the pattern, so we don't know what it is. Um, and she just released row 11 of the pattern. Now she's doing it on the flower loom and she's making the, uh, the call them yo-yos, little circles and then stitching them together. So her blanket is really gonna be big. I mean, it's gonna be like bed size, 60 something inches, 62 inches square or something. Well, mine is nothing like that. It's about 35 inches because what I'm doing, I have it down there, but it's really hard for me to hold it up. I'm doing the block stitch, doing it a graph GAN. And so mine is only about, like I said, about 35 inches long. So what I'm going to be doing are wide. So what I'll probably do is use that as a center piece of a blanket and put a big border or something around it to make it a little bit bigger. Uh, it will end up being a child's blanket, I suppose. Um, like I said, I don't know what the blank, I don't know what the picture is yet. Okay. So, I, like I said, I have finished 11 rows of my version of what she's doing. And I'll pop in a picture here so then you can see what it looks like so far. Okay, so there is what I've gotten so far. Uh, I'm enjoying working on it. And uh, I had gotten behind about three rows, I think, and had to catch up. Uh, but I am keeping up with it pretty well. And I'm keeping up with all my tails, weaving them in. So I'm glad about that. <laughs> um, and like I said, I'm enjoying it. I still don't know what it is yet. Um, but I'm having a good time with it. Okay, so the next thing is, let's see, that is all my works in progress right now. Okay, so upcoming. Now that I have finished my little tutu bear, <laughs> um, now I am ready to start another amigurumi. Last week I was telling you that I was going to, I had purchased this kit from Amazon. Well, I got it free because I had some Amazon credits through my Shopkicks app that I cash in for a gift card. So I got this set free and it's got the pattern, well the, the yarn in here is enough to make Santa and Rudolph right there. And then, but the book, this is the book, it's got 12 patterns which will make all these characters right there from the cartoon and then all of those characters. So six characters all together. Okay, so I had mentioned last week that I was going to uh, make, since it's 12, I was thinking, well, I'll just make 12, you know, make one character a month, unless I want to get ahead, but not pressing it. <laughs> I think it'll be one character per month, and then at the end of the year for Christmas, again, or Christmas 2020, I will have the set. And it was one of my favorite uh, Christmas shows when I was a kid. And so, when I said that, I had several comments um, in, under the video saying that there was several people that had this set and they hadn't made, used it yet. And so they wanted to join me in making these characters. And I thought, oh, that's so fun. And so, uh, and then I had a couple that said, oh, okay, I'm, I'm going to go order it right now. And then the, they answered me back or whatever, not answered me, but... Uh, commented back and said, oh, I ordered it, so I'm going to do it with you, so I think that's going to be so fun. Okay, so somebody was asking me, well, which character are we going to do first? Well, 
Okay, so for first, I had said last week that I was going to do it in worsted weight because I think these turn out quite small, like the deer, you know, and some of them are only like three, three and three quarters or, you know, less than four inches tall. And so I was the end, and then somebody commented and told me that they had made a, made a set, not this one, but similar, that the the characters are really small. And so I thought, well, maybe I should do worsted weight because I have a more colors in worsted weight already that I could use to make these. Um, but then I was thinking, if I did worsted weight, they may be quite a bit bigger. Which would be fine, except there's 12 of them. And I was thinking, well, where am I going to put it, <laughs> you know, in my house to display it? And I really don't have a whole lot of area for that large of a group of characters. So I think what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and use the yarn that it came with and, and continue on using its DK weight yarn, I believe. Yeah, in the pattern it calls for DK weight, which would be like a number three weight or like a baby weight, even a sport weight. Um, and so I think I have, and I was looking at the colors, and I think I have, most of these I have, um, I think I do have it in DK weight. It's kind of basic colors. Um, if not, then it will be a challenge for me to find it. So, um I'll be looking ahead to see what character I'm doing next and um, be looking for it to get that color that I need. But I think I think it'll be good. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is, somebody was asking me, what do we do first? Well, let's just use the book and if, if everybody's up for it, we will go just in the order of the, pat of the uh, characters that are in the book. Or at least that's what I'm thinking right now anyway. So the first character is Rudolph. So that's, that sounds good. I mean, it sounds good to me. So that's what I'm going to be starting on, and I will be starting on him this next week. Um, and so uh, if everybody wants to start on Rudolph, we will do Rudolph for January. <laughs> okay. And I will put a link in the description box below where you can find this kit. I got it from Amazon. Uh, if you want to get it and join us. Okay. Um, so... Oh, I think this is getting really long. I'm thinking it seems like I've been talking a while. <laughs> and so I think what I'm going to do is uh, I still wanted to talk to you about the crochet along that's coming up next month that people were wanting to uh, participate in with me. Uh, and so uh, I'll just show you is this blanket, this one that's been on the uh, chair back there. And so I was going to, but I needed to talk to you a little bit about it before starting it and seeing what you thought. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, save that for an, another video. Probably tomorrow I'll do that one. And I also want to do a video um, about my whip wall over there. I will take a picture of it since I can't really turn the camera that well right now. But I will take a picture of that whip wall <laughs> and um, and pop it in here, and then you can see what I'm talking about. But what I want to do is, or I'll not pop it in here, but what I want to do is I'll show it to you and then um, go through some of those and, and see if, there's, if I'm going to decide to finish them and what's in those bags that I haven't looked in in a while, and um, either finish them or frog them. So uh, here's a picture of that whip wall. Okay, guys, so that means I'll be doing another couple of videos just within a day, probably a day or two, uh, for those two items, two subject matters. <laughs> and so uh, be looking for that and check those out if you're interested. Okay, thank you so much to my subscribers. I want to let you know that the channel has reached over 7,000 subscribers now. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> um, thank you so much to the subscribers that have been with me from the beginning and those that have uh, recently joined me. Welcome. I appreciate it. Uh, you subscribing um, and if you haven't subscribed then please consider doing so if you want to follow along on progress uh, my progress of what I'm making um, I, I do quite a bit of different things as you can see <laughs> and I also do uh, tutorials from time to time and um, I want to even do more of those as time goes by um, so anyway come 
uh, come and join us. And in, Oh, and I have a Facebook group, Yarn Joy Podcast. Go over there and join that if you are uh, on Facebook. And so that way I can see what you're working on. I love this, that when I love when others post pictures of what they're working on so that I can see uh, what you're doing and we can all share in showing our pro projects with each other. So thanks so much, guys. Uh, I really am uh, so happy that the channel is growing and I'm meeting so many great people. That's the best part of best part of it. Um, so thank you so much for commenting and and uh, joining me on this yarn joy journey. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to go, guys. I do want to say, please keep remembering in prayer and good thoughts to those that are in Australia. Uh, I have a uh, several people that I have met through YouTube and some of my commenters through that way uh, that are there in Australia. And so... Um, I get, we'll be getting updates here and there on different things and it sounds like things are looking up um, there's more rain some rain and stuff that's it's expected so let's pray that that rain comes on down and, and, and extinguishes all those fires um, so keep them in your thoughts and prayers okay so I'm going to go guys <sighs> have a great weekend and we will see you in the next video bye